Hey, good morning guys, I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are going to be working on a WJ. No, not this WJ. I still haven't gotten the title for this thing. Previous owner can't find it, that's okay. I got a lot of stuff going on, but I'm not gonna spend a dime or lift a finger on this thing till I get one. So, we are going to be working on this WJ. A 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo, new to the family with 190,000 miles on it. All right, guys, we're here with my cousin's 2002 WJ. He just picked this up, and it's got a small radiator leak. So we're going to go take care of that, and um, we are going to swap the tires also. We got uh, some replacement wheels off of WK, and uh, I don't know. We'll tinker and see what else we could dig into. It's a Jeep day. Let's make Jeep. So uh, what's the official name for this new Jeep? Alahama. Alahama. <laughs> Because ham is delicious. I'll, uh, ham. Oh, we could get a little exacto <laughs> knife and just move some letters. A la hammer. <laughs> I love it. Folkley. Repping the Folkley. Looking good. Rust free WJ. Alabama treated it well. Oh, you got some mud in your tires. <laughs> I got mud in my tires? Mm hmm. Let me ask you a question. How do you get mud into the tires? All right, let's take a look under the bonnet here. And there it is, straight six. Best motor in all the land. So we got a little crack in the radiator here, I understand. Um, it's not leaking right now. It was pretty dry when you pulled in. But we know it's leaking because you had a leak. So we ordered ourselves a radiator. So we are going to replace it today, among some other things. All right, we're gonna dig in and start by taking off the grill. These are a bunch of, what are they, seven millimeter? Seven millimeter on the grill. So this is a 2002. I'm not sure, I think later models just might have a clip-on grill. But take these off and, ah, look at that. This isn't seven millimeter, it's 11. You're an imposter. Nice. That should be a long one. Oh yeah. And these look like brand new headlights. They should just pop on out. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did you ever do a whole segment and forget to hit record? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put everything back together and then uh, thought I pressed record and <laughs> didn't again. <laughs> so on the third time, third time's a charm. Yeah. Sometimes filming is rough. <laughs> All right, put that in the safe place. Spikes. Yeah, original Jeep headlight. And you got the ball and sockets here. You're a medical guy. <laughs> Looks like a shoulder joint. <laughs> kind of actually genius idea. Nice and simple way to clip these in. Let me tell you, this stuff looks more complicated than, than the body. Yeah, right? The body heals. Yeah, right. You know, like this, if you don't do it right, it's not going to work. <laughs> so I should just put two ends next to each other. It might work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we got to take off the bumper cover. There is a bunch of clips here. I think there's one screw there. That should be the only screw. And we're going to go along here. And nope, they're at the bottom. There's like screws at the bottom. Nope, not screws. Clips at the bottom. We'll take off the clips. Yep, definitely a 10 millimeter. Yeah, I think a GoPro on my head would be a lot easier than messing with all these tripods and crap. Um, do you guys ever film surgeries like with yep. stuff? Yeah, so you do it laparoscopically with the camera's an instrument. The camera itself has a camera on it, but then when you open, there there are uh, some surgeons that will wear it. Yeah, one for documentation, two for like uh, research. Research, sure. They say like, uh, uh, you know, I have a giant infection or something like that. I'm like, well, here's a picture from the operation. Standard surgery. Yeah. It just happens to be a risk. Bottom ones. There we go. Yeah. Eat clips or eat lobster. <laughs> Slide out that little plunger thing, and they just pop out. Oh yeah, you got fog lights. Ooh, your Jeep is fancy. Got a lot of fog down there. <laughs> it's <pretty laughs> Fog in the lower levels. 
and disconnect the fog lights. All right, she's free. All right, we're gonna remove the header panel now, and I'm pretty sure seven, seven T twenty-seven. Don't forget this one over here. Uh uh, don't forget this one and this one. Eight. <laughs> it makes it so much easier with the impact. It really does. Should be a tab pushed down. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's coming out. And I got one electrical connection. Oh, the headlights got headlights. Yeah, actually, I remember you said disconnect this whole headlight harness. Push that little t red tab through. You pull the red part. Yep. There you go. Ah. Sweet. off the hood latch. Lay her down. Ta-da! Alright, we're just gonna start this thing. We're gonna verify that this is where the leak is. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> Alright guys, this is definitely one of the strangest things I've ever seen. This is definitely cracked right here. It was leaking fluid at one point, and we have plenty of coolant in here. It's at operating temperature. The thermostat is definitely open, <laughs> and it's not leaking. This thing, T1000 itself. Has this happened to any of you guys before? A healing radiator? Crazy. Either way, we're gonna replace it. All right, so just looking at some parts over here. We got the front bumper and we figured uh, we'll take a look at the rear bumper and notice that there's some chunks of Bondo and some smash marks in here. So we figured, what the heck? Oops, didn't mean that. <laughs> what the heck? Let's go to the junkyard, see if we can find some replacement stuff. Look what we got here. Auto parts store and junkyard score. <laughs> Bunch of different stuff. Center console, CD player cover thingy bumper and much more so we are gonna get to work on a lot of wj stuff today all right we're getting off all our support bolts we got this one this one same on this side this one over here this one here this one here just disconnecting everything radiator related we're also getting up under here and I think I'm gonna paint this because it's a little rusty, but we're also gonna get the lower radiator hose off. We're gonna get that transmission line off. And coming on this side, this bolt is hard to get to because this frame rail's in the way. So we're gonna have to pick this thing up and shift it out of the way so we could get on that head. Yeah, it's coming along, guys, coming along. All right, got Dr. Matt working on the bumper. Yeah, baby, I'm about to drain the petcock, get all that coolant out of there. Before you operate on someone, you drain the blood, right? Just like I drain the coolant? Bloodletting. Yeah, Standard. yeah, drain the blood. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and drain the blood out of this dude. Say what you love, right? Alright, just kind of shimmied this up out of the way so we could get this 10 millimeter off uh, this fan shroud which is connected to the radiator. Radiator. <laughs> Alright, we're still holding this up out of the way and I got the old seven eighths to take off the transmission cooler line. Let's see, we want to go lefty loosey, righty tighty. Oh, she's twisting a little bit. I don't like that. Uh-oh.
There we go. Whew. That was scary. That was scary as hell. E fan, cool baby. All right, with the E fan and shroud out of the way, we could get to the bottom trans line, and of course, some TV blast. Hopefully, that'll loosen up. Don't want to break a trans line right now. That would suck. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> Too easy. There we go. Oh. oh, she's a long one. <laughs> Too long. All right, we're just going to pull this right out. Woo! Yeah, yeah, you were. <laughs> I thought I flipped it already. All right, time for the new radiator to go in. Don't forget to use your rubber grommets. Got to reuse them. We're just going to drop this in. All right, here comes the E-Fan again. No need to over-tighten. Woo-wee. You're gonna wanna drop this trans line back down through the gap between your fan, shroud, and radiator so it lines up where it's supposed to be. I committed the ultimate Ricky mistake and I have to redo the worst bolt, the worst fastener in the world. Let's try to line this stupid line up. I gotta line the line up. How about that? Who would have thunk? All right, now the trans line is right where it need be. Just hand tighten this so it stays where it should stay. And now we could sandwich on, yep, sandwich on the fan shroud to the radiator. Radiator. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to reconnect the trans lines, kind of hard to see, but here's the top one, and here's the bottom one. Now, I forgot to mark them, but the uh, memory in the hose brings it back to where it wants to go. So that's how I know what is what, and we're going to go with that. Gotta make sure we put the Jesus bolts on. So if I forget, <laughs> down the road they'll be saying, oh Jesus! <laughs>
All right, guys, good morning. It is the next day, and I got to catch you up on what you missed. See, we were having so much fun doing the radiator install, doing a coolant flush, doing an oil change, putting on new wheels, putting on a new bumper, painting the bumper, painting the trim, all that good stuff. I forgot to check the camera. I didn't realize the battery had died. So what you missed was everything going back together. It kind of got dark, so you couldn't see much anyway. But we went on a test drive, and we were leaking trans fluid. So I think it's because... I know it's because we used the old lines and they were kind of messed up from taking them off the old radiator. We should have just got new lines from the start, but we didn't. I tried to crank him down real tight one more time before he left and went home, but by the time he got home, he had leaked so much trans fluid that his trans was actually slipping. So here's what we're gonna do. Today I'm going out to him and I'm gonna do an on the road trans cooler video. So I'm gonna end this video as the radiator install and we're going to start a new one up as the trans cooler video so to be continued like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next project peace <laughs> 